Hello friends, in the previous session, we have gone through the basics of source free RL circuits and source free RC circuits and we have done a number of problems involving the source free RL and RC circuits. So in this particular session, we are going to start with a new topic which is called the driven circuits. I have already mentioned we will be doing source free RL circuits, source free RC circuits and now it is time to do driven circuits and in this we will be covering driven RL circuits and driven RC circuits. Okay. Now, basically, what is a source free circuit? Till now, whatever problem we have discussed, you might have noticed that a source free circuit is a circuit in which at time t equal to 0, at time t equal to 0, the source is removed from the circuit. Right? If you go through all these problems which we have gone uh, already, you can see that at t equal to 0, the source is removed from the circuit. So how did the circuit look like? So if this voltage was V and let me just mark three points here and this is my resistance R and the inductance L. In a source free circuit, what happened at T equal to zero? This was the condition. Alright. So at T greater than zero, that is when the switching has happened, the circuit looked like this. The circuit looked something like this. Now, this is our circuit of interest, right? This is the circuit of interest. Alright? Now, in this, source is not connected. So, that is what is called a source free circuit. After t equal to 0, the source is removed. Now, what is a driven circuit? In a driven circuit, at t equal to 0, what happens is that the source is introduced into the circuit. The source is introduced into a circuit. Now this particular circuit might already have a, uh, another source in it, but you are introducing another source. So whenever a source is introduced into a circuit, at the time of switching, it is called a driven circuit. All right. So if I do take the same example, I have to just change the switch positions here. Okay. So what happens at t equal to zero, the switching happen action is like this. So at t greater than zero, what happens is that this particular source V is now connected to the yeah it's now connected to the circuit so this is what happens in uh, driven circuit now before going into the in-depth explanation of driven circuit I would like to introduce a concept of the unit step function unit step function you might already have studied in your signals and systems courses Alright, so we will be using the same concept which you have already learned. So, how does a unit step function is represented? So, it is usually represented by the letter u of t. Now, I will put here 1 into u of t. Okay, this is not serial number 1, it is 1 into u of t. So, this is the representation. Now, graphically, how does the unit step function look like? So, if this is my time axis and this is u of t, basically u of t looks like this. So at t equal to 0, you get the graph like this and this amplitude is 1. Okay. Now in case I am putting 2 into u of t, what it means is that at t equal to 0, the amplitude is 2 times. So it is 2 into u of t. So 3 into u of t means the amplitude will be 3 into, uh, the amplitude here will be 3. Now another thing which you have to know is that for example, I put something like 1 into u of t minus t0. Okay. What this means is that the unit step function will come into existence after a time period of t equal to t0. So if I to put it graphically, I will just put u of t also side by side. So if the top one is u of t, it looks like this. So this is u of t. So after a particular point time t equal to t naught, this is u of t minus t naught. So 1 into u of t minus t naught means the amplitude is 1. So what is the meaning of say u of t minus 1? So if you put it graphically, the step function will start after a time period of 1 second. So this will be 1. So u of t minus 2, the step function will start after a time period of so this is how a unit step function is represented. Now, for example, 
somebody gives a circuit like this say 5 into u of t minus 2 so this is a circuit this is a network I don't know what is that but somebody gives it like this now we have always been used with uh, the switches right so what it means is that see this if I put it in a graph how it will look at t equal to 2 this unit step with an amplitude of 5 is going to come into existence so basically what it means is that it is very similar to having a switch and a voltage source of 5 volt okay and this switch will close at the time is equal to t equal to 2 so these two are identical these two are identical so if somebody puts a voltage source like this 5 into u of t okay 5 into u of t so what does that mean it means that there is a switch and there is a 5 volt source and you know that u of t comes into existence at exactly t equal to 0 okay so this is t this is u of t and this is 5 the amplitude is 5 so 5 into u of t so at t equal to 0 this 5 volt is going to get introduced in the circuit now uh, in signal sign system this particular point you know that there is there cannot be a sudden jump right so usually they just put it like this here so or for example you are having 5 into u of t minus 2 okay so usually they put 2 here and they just put the uh, unit in uh, unit step function like this but we are doing the circuit analysis right so we will be just putting it completely here so this will be phi into u of t minus 2 so this is the basics that uh, we have to know about unit step function because in problems it will come into uh, a little bit of importance now with this let us start with a basic representation of a driven RL circuit so we are going to start with a driven RL circuit so how does the circuit look like so the circuit which I am going to take is like this so V this is V and this will switch at t equal to 0 like this and you are having your resistance and then you are having your inductance okay now this current is i of t this current is i of t and at t equal to 0 this is going to switch now my assumption here is that this inductor was de-energized this inductor is de-energized which means that before this switch was closed that means at t equal to 0 minus there was no current through the inductor okay so at i of 0 minus the current was equal to 0 this is the basic assumption that I am going to start with now it need not be like this it can be 2 amperes it can be 3 amperes it can be anything but for simplicity I am starting with 0 amperes now let us do an intuitive understanding of this how it will look like now you already know that because it is passing through the inductor the i of 0 minus will be equal to the i of 0 plus so just after switching also the current will be equal to 0 now once the transients has died off so when the system comes into its steady state condition the inductor will act as a short circuit so how will the circuit look like at steady state the circuit will look like something like this the inductor is a short circuit so this particular current i of t after the transients has died down so it will be i of t after transients have died down it is v by r so you will expect the current to be something like this okay so i of t will be v by r so this is something that you exist uh, you understand but in circuit analysis we are also interested in the transient analysis right so your graph should represent the transient analysis as well now at t equal to 0 plus you know that the current through the inductor will be always equal to 0 but as the time goes it has to reach this particular value of v by r so a basic intuition will tell us that the current is going to start at t equal to 0 and it will gradually rise and finally it will come to this particular value which is v by r and at this point we can tell that the transient has died off okay or the system is in its steady state condition okay so the same thing 
which we have derived out of intuition we can do it mathematically as well so all we have to do is write a kvl across this particular uh, graph uh, this particular circuit after the switching has taken place so what is what we will get here we will get minus v plus r into i plus l di divided by dt equal to 0 so this is the basic kvl that we all know okay now doing this might be taking a little bit of more effort so there is an easy way to do these types of problems now i am not going to do the lengthy derivation because in problems we will be doing the easy method all right now you know that the current response i of t now this is the forcing function and this is the response function all right so this will contain two terms one will be the current at the steady state condition all right one is current at steady state condition plus another current which is due to the transient response of the inductor okay now the steady state condition you can already find it out at steady state you know that the inductor will be a short circuit to dc okay that means the same circuit will come into picture therefore the steady state current value will be equal to v by r that means i of t will be equal to v by r plus now this transient response already you know that it has a form of a into e power minus r by l into t which is got from the source free condition so i'll put that here so it is a into e power minus r by l into t okay now in the earlier problems we used to put t equal to 0 right so let us find at t equal to 0 so what is the value of i of 0 i of 0 is equal to v by r plus a so we have to find the value of a here now i have already started with the assumption that i of 0 is equal to 0 that means the circuit was de-energized so in case there was some other current at i of 0 that you can put it here but because this is a basic derivation we are going to start with i of 0 equal to 0 so this value is 0 that means 0 is equal to v by r plus a or a is equal to minus v by r that means the total response after the switching i of t will be equal to v by r minus v by r e power minus r by l into or I can put it as V by R into 1 minus E power minus R by L into T. Now if you plot this particular uh, equation that we have got. So this is I of T and this is time. Now at T equal to 0, at T equal to 0, this E power 0 will be equal to 1. So 1 minus 1 equal to 0. So V by R into 0 will be equal to 0 that current value will be equal to 0 so it will start at 0 as time goes because it's an exponential function which is continuously decreasing the value so the system can only gradually come up okay the system can only gradually come up and at t equal to infinity or very large values of t what happens is that e power minus infinity is again 0 so you get the value V by R into 1 minus 0 so the value is v by r so after a large amount of time it will settle down to v by r so this is going to be v by r okay so this is the same thing which we have got out of intuition as well but this we have done in proper uh, in a proper derivation uh, technique also okay so in the next lecture we will be starting with problems on driven rl circuits and i hope you have understood this lecture please like share and subscribe if you like this video and i'll see you in the next lecture thank you